All right, y'all. Took the cornfield nature trail and it's a nice evening. It's probably about 85 degrees. Um, weekday in March. The time of day, season, and your powers of observation will shape what you see and how you see it. Welcome to the Hopper Portal. My name is Sunny and this is Chi Dog. For each destination on the Hopper Portal, I'll describe amenities, learning opportunities, and special features for each stop as Chi and I visit different places on our travels. Each stop is unique, but two things all Hopper Portal stops have in common is that they're all free for visitors and they each provide opportunities to learn about the area's ecology and the natural world. When you're exploring the Hopper Portal, Look for the grasshopper rating system, with five grasshoppers being my favorites. These ratings are determined by accessibility, special features, and educational value for each location. When you're on the hopper portal found on grasshopperslanding.com, you can click on the grass puffs to learn more about each site. There's only one other carload of visitors. The visitor center is closed for COVID-19. It appears it had been closed uh, throughout the pandemic. So the visitor center and some of the exhibits that are available in there were kind of off limits, as well as the restrooms with running water. However, there are benches, the picnic tables, and there was a portage on at the beginning of this trail and so just for reference if you're driving the goose loop auto trail this cornfield nature trail is kind of near the beginning so there's a little parking area some signage and there's a porta john available there you know being as things are seeming to cool off with the pandemic we might see the visitor center and some of the facilities opening up here soon so um that's something to keep in mind but even with some of the closures going on, haven't seen a lot of wildlife. There are a lot of cool plants and you can learn about the habitat throughout the entire year. I would say the winter time is probably a great time to visit. You can always check out the website or even call their posted open hours to see what birds you might find migrating through. It's definitely desert habitat. Wildlife you may see, we've got the Northern Harrier, American Kestrel, Says Phoebe, Bobcat, Desert Cottontail, Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, Gamble's Quail, which we definitely saw in New Mexico, and Coyote for Cottonwood, Willow, and Mesquite. You know, it's a special habitat. We are in the Sonoran Desert. It's definitely an important place as far as wildlife diversity and great examples of desert adaptation from both plants, animals, and I mean, I haven't seen any fungus, but I'm sure there's some adapted fungus as well. <laughs> A little bit about the Cornfield Nature Trail is 
The trail was built in cooperation with the Bureau of Reclamation and Cibola National Wildlife Refuge. Take a walk through the splendors of historical native habitats, which once dominated the banks and uplands along the lower Colorado River. These habitats, cottonwood, willow, and mesquite, provide important habitat for migratory birds, such as the endangered southwestern willow flycatcher and other wildlife species. What I'm seeing is there's different fields that are managed. They're growing various grains and grasses for wildlife. I'm not sure if it's because it's such a large expanse of this region of the natural habitat that was here. Maybe there was some grassland habitat at some point. It's been kind of taken over by industrial agriculture, as we saw earlier um, on the way here. And so they're growing a lot of different, there's, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so different paddocks of things growing. And we saw some of the ditches, they manage ditch water. That's how they probably use, you know, they use to irrigate. So we're still on the goose loop and it's really just a lot of managed fields. I'm not sure that they manage it organically. Typically, federal government, when they grow crops for wildlife, it's conventional. It's not, it's not organic. They might spray and I just, I don't wanna get sh me and she too close to those chemicals. So I'm guessing, I did see some kestrels, which is cool. I'm guessing these grains attract some rodents as well, and in which case there are some birds of prey, the raptors, if you will, hunting some of the smaller critters that are eating the grains. The Canada geese that migrate from here, their goslings are quite cute. They seem to have a very healthy population, but apparently not in this area has is probably something to do with the drought. It's quite dry. Not sure what the average precipitation has been. Of course, if you catch a ranger or an employee or a volunteer in the visitor center, I'm sure you can learn a lot about what, what's going on here and some of the management practices they're using and some of the wildlife they're trying to attract. Okay, so I think we're done this. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we went around the loop. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, a great way to support our channel is to like, subscribe, or share our content. If you have the means, feel free to make a financial contribution. Buy me a cup of tea or a chi a bone by donating on grasshoppersLanding.com. Have a great day!